Well, Ken, big decision to move away. You've uh, come and gone a few times in a soccer <laughs> administrator, manager, coach role. And what was the instigator to this particular move? Um, yeah, that was so long ago, eight years ago. Uh, I moved here in 2005. It actually came about, um, I'd been down here, my dad was quite ill at the time, and uh, I'd been down to visit him on a couple of occasions and heard that John Herdman, who had been in the role here and had went on with New Zealand football, had uh, had moved on, and they were actually nobody in the place, nobody was doing the football development. And at that time I was uh, managing a motel in Paraparumu, um, and yeah, look, the thought of coming back to Southland um, looking after football again was quite appealing so uh, got a conversation with uh, Jeff Walker and and eventually ended up coming down in 2005. So what's changed now? Is it a, a change of uh, job that you seek or family matters? Yeah, it's like everybody I suppose you, you go through periods in your life and you review where you've come from and, and where you're heading and, and um, what stage of life you're at and, and we came to that point uh, probably almost a year ago where we started to think well we're really happy with what we're doing here, love Invercargill, uh, my wife's from, from Wellington region and her family's around Wellington, um, we've really enjoyed it here, we've been, made some tremendous friends and um, it's, been, uh, it's been really good for us um, but we're now at a point where her family are in the North Island, my daughter's live in the North Island. I have two granddaughters in the North Island, so um, I'm not really seeing enough of them. Um, so we thought, well, if we're ever going to move at this stage of our lives, um, now is probably a good time to do that rather than wait too much longer. And you're staying in the game, but a different role up there, quite an exciting change for you. Yes, I'm actually looking forward to it. It's um, Here I've been looking after South and football and quite um, you know, in a regional um, phase, and, and South and football comes under the Football South Federation, which covers Timaru South so we're just a district of, of the Football South Federation. The role in uh, Waikato Bay of Plenty is the Federation role so I'll be in charge of all of that uh, region, the Waikato and Bay of Plenty area. Um, the challenge for me that I think will be the most refreshing part is it's specifically around player and coach development um, so I'll be responsible for looking at that and developing that area in, in, that, in that Federation. So sort of more hands on football, less administration? Yeah, absolutely. The role here in, in Southland um, has been an enjoyable one and, and I've taken a lot of things on that I thought, well, maybe I can help here and, and do, do a better job in some of the other areas and it's sort of evolved into quite a, a big monster. <laughs> um, so it's, it'll be nice now to get back to something more specific. You left behind a legacy, let's say there's two phases, obviously the development of soccer in the region, let's tackle that one first. You're happy where the game has gone, the numbers playing from when perhaps you took over a, um, in your latest tenure? Yeah, I'm pretty happy at the moment to be honest. Um, the numbers are never going to grow dramatically here, I think the population in Southland is not growing so I think it's probably too much to expect us to, as a sport to really grow dramatically with the numbers. I think the focus from a Southland football point of view over the years has always been on trying to provide um, a good experience for those people that are currently playing the game and in doing that if we do provide them with a really good experience then the word will spread and people will want to come and join and, and play football. And the fact that we've probably over the years maintained a really stable base of players, I think, is, is, is fairly good in this current uh, situation. And not forgetting the bricks and mortar changes, you've uh, mine have worked out of some pretty scruffy sort of temporary <laughs> offices um, through to the state of the art technology you enjoy today. Uh, obviously, the the work uh, office environment, but this fantastic multi-purpose park. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely brilliant. Um, and really we have the, the ILT, the ILT Foundation, the Community Trust and those organisations that supported us in developing this, this facility. Uh, we often have uh, members of New Zealand football coming down here and people from other regions throughout the country and they come and see this and they think we're the luckiest people in the country. And we are and it's a fantastic facility. It has had a big impact in the game, not just not in actually growing numbers but providing a much better experience for, for everybody involved in the game. You're taking out those weather elements, um, the days of watching boggy football in Surrey Park are gone. Fortunately, uh, people get a chance to enhance their skills here. Absolutely. It makes me wish I was 18 or 19 again. Getting out on this artificial surface playing football is, uh, is wonderful. And we've managed to grow what we can deliver and what we can offer to, to people and players in the game. Um, 
every three mornings a week we have uh, about 20 young players down here training for an hour from seven till eight prior to going to school. So without this facility, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do that. What about the state of the game nationally? Get your view on that before you go. Obviously, um, missed out on the World Cup recently. Phoenix, um, bottom of the table or close there too. So at the very top level, maybe not the performances we're after, but below that, lots of interest. There was certainly lots of interest. I don't know whether that's because it's not doing so well. <laughs> you know, so good publicity is just as good as bad publicity. But, and there are a lot of people talking about football and there's a lot of um, comments flying around the country. And, and that's, that's got to be good that people are talking about football. Um, yes, it probably could be in a better state. Looking ahead, though, next year we've got the Under-20 World Cup hosting here in New Zealand, and that's going to be a big event. And I, Hopefully that will regenerate everybody and, um, and then qualify for the next World Cup. I think it must be an aim for New Zealand football to get uh, everything back in order again and, and get someone in charge and, um, and look to qualify for the next World Cup. Yeah, we're hoping New Zealand perform well in the competition and we've got some a local opportunity with Dunedin hosting some, some major games. Absolutely, and uh, great opportunity for people from Southland. Dunedin's only a couple of hours drive up the road um, and uh, there'll be some uh, world-class footballers on, on display in that Under-20 World Cup and it's um, well worth the uh, little bit of driving and um, get up there and, get, and watch those games. And what do you know about the state of football in the Waikato and that, that region you're taking over? Is it, um, is it, is it a growth sport there? Um, but certainly it's, it's very similar to Football South in terms geographically. It's a big region, so that it has challenges in itself in trying to overcome and bring people together um, to uh, develop players and develop coaches. So I, I see it very similar and I would like to think, I haven't, I don't know a lot about it to be honest, I've looked at, into it and I've talked to people about it, but there already is a good strong base of players. Um, uh, it's well organised, well structured as a federation, um, but I'm sure there's, there's uh, room for improvement in there and um, we're looking for opportunities to try and improve that. You got that Barry Gardner working for you, haven't you? Yeah, Is that yeah. good or bad? I like. It. How's that going to go down? Yeah, well, we'll just see how he goes. You know, we had to get rid of him from here, so we kicked him off the <laughs> Tosaka Tim show. You can look after him now. Uh, uh, he tells me that he was he, he was pretty to top of the list with those top of soccer tips. They're not true. He was a tall storyteller. I, do, I give you that. Uh, what about your successor here? That um, that that's been uh, sorted. Yes, we have, um, and I'm quite pleased that um, the person that's going to take my place, hopefully in, within the next few days, um, is a guy called John McLennan. Now, John uh, has experience in this region. He worked in Dunedin for Football South seven or eight years ago for a couple of years. He was a very successful coach with the Cavisham Club at the Premier, Southern Premier League level. Um, Tremendous playing experience as a professional player in Scotland. Um, tremendous experience throughout the world in different countries and coaching. Uh, and uh, I'm sure he's going to come in and possibly not do as good a job as I have, but <laughs> I'm sure he's going to keep that momentum that we've got going. Did he play at the World Cup? No, unfortunately no. He's <laughs> what are you going to do for interviews every time the World Cup comes round uh, again? You're, you're it down the scene of the country. Yeah, but but he's, a, he's a Scotsman, so he'll have plenty to say about it. I'm sure he will. Yeah. So you leave um, happy with what's been achieved, looking forward to a new challenge, and um, it's an exciting time for you and the family. Uh, yeah, that sums it up very, very well, yeah.